Omar is 26, and for him, he says, the Bible is a storybook that promotes sensational claims that someone superior exists, and he is not a believer. Please help me welcome Omar to the show. Omar. Yes, hi. hi. I'm okay, thank you. Hi. Uma. Yes, yes. You say the, Bi the Bible is a storybook. Uh, for my case, I normally quote a Bible as a, a liable or a storybook because uh, it's just like a novel and uh, you don't just have to read it. You see, believers normally tell us that uh, you don't read the Bible just like a novel. But to me, because if God in real sense can make a Bible that can be understood differently with different people, then it means, all along it means that uh, the, the novel, the way novel can be understood in different manners. So it takes the same direction, the same track, the same snacking area with the novel because the Bible, you interpret it in a different manner. The way you interpret a novel in a, dip a, a different manner. So it takes the same snack with the novel. And I quote it as a storybook or a liable. Liable because it contains so many things that are, are lies that cannot not make sense at all. Okay, yeah. so when you have a story book in your life, Yeah, in fact, the Bible is the one that made me to be uh, an atheist because it keeps contradicting itself. So tell me about your upbringing. Kamajina una ito oma sorry to na job na toka area gani ya i Kenya. So oh. wazazi wazazi nyumbani mulikuwa mnenda kanisa every Sunday ama wazazi they were not believers at oh, all. Oh, from the back, uh, from the back time of my, of my upbringing. I was born an atheist because in the first place when you are, you are not introduced to anything like uh, you are not indoctrinated, you have no idea about God, you are an atheist. And later on I was forced to go to, to church because obviously when you, are, you have to do what your parents are doing and uh, at times I may fail to go to church and uh, they could whip me very well and uh, in that manner I had uh, to gauge some at some areas and see that um, in fact, I have so many questions I ask myself and uh, see that actually uh, the Bible um, does not give us a proof or a fact that uh, there exists someone who is superior that controls everything we see here. Are a lot of your friends atheists or are they believers? Oh, you see, <laughs> I have lost so many friends because of atheism. I had, uh, in fact, uh, I lost uh, most of my campus guys whom we were with and uh, those those that understand me from the beginning, we are still together. Yeah. And what about the ones that you lost? So what about you made them decide, you know what, I don't want to be a woman's friend anymore? Uh, no, I don't take it the way you take it because if you want to leave, you go. I have nothing to do with you. Yeah. And earlier on when you were talking to Derek, Derek was like, it's hard to date. Mm. Is it the same for you? Is it hard to date as an atheist man? Though it is quite confidential, but I am dating. Does she know you're an atheist? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is she an atheist? No, no, no. But she you had Derek's advice to Alex, which we will come to. Yeah. Because if you, if you, uh, if, if you decide to get married, when kids get involved, how, how are you going to handle that? You see, sir, uh, it, when it reaches a time when um, I have kids and uh, I'm married, obviously from the beginning, I've said and I normally tell my, my chick that uh, whenever we get married, when we shall get married, have children, don't dare at any point to take my child to any church or uh, make my child to believe in anything that is not there. But it's her child too, and you said she's a believer. No, 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 my child is my child. We have to respect each other because what you are interested in, I don't want my child to be indoctrinated with this thing because for me, my parents uh, did me not favor because uh, in the early childhood, uh, they made me believe someone is up there He's silent, he, speak, he makes miracles, people are healed or anything, and he doesn't appear anywhere. So nobody has any God. And uh, in that way, I don't want my child to go the same track I took in the first place. So Jefferson, you're 24 years old and uh, still in campus. Yeah, I'm still And in uh, you identify <laughs> as an atheist. Yeah, so like for me, it happened right after high school. Uh, when I was around 12, I did have my doubts because to me this, the Bible sounded more like a novel than it did a religious text that it's supposed to explain the origin of the universe and everything. 
So, but then when I got to high school and then I learned that all things that religion seems to give an explanation to, there are better explanations from science and other sources. So that's, that's where I picked up, like, I became I identified as an atheist. Like, before then, uh, okay. Afterwards, like, after I finished high school, that's when I started seriously looking into it. And I, I got help from a few atheist YouTubers who gave me, like, after listening to their videos, I got Can the direction. YouTubers or international atheist YouTubers? Yeah, international atheist YouTubers. So I got the directions from them, like, Okay, like they explained some of the things that were lingering. And to them, that made more sense than my pastor, or my, the, my father, my, the Catholic priest. Yeah, to me, the, they made more sense. So I identified as an atheist from them. Okay, so I want to ask, because so far I'm sure you're also wondering, Tanima, you've just shown us a lineup of men. So are there female atheists in Kenya? There are quite a number. I know quite a number. But you know, na uh, naturally, uh, uh, women tend to be more believers than men. If, if you look at the demographics, uh, I, I, I don't have a, a, a scientific or a social explanation to that. But it's something you can just observe. Uh, probably because men are the breadwinners and they have to be busy on Saturday. They are, they are, someone will have to find out that. Uh, I think that partially contributes, but there are quite a number of uh, active uh, and even more staunch uh, atheist, female atheist than. Okay, good to know. So um, I, I, wanna, I wanna throw it to my audience because obviously a lot of people feel some type of way about your views and really that's why we're trying to have this conversation because we are all built differently and we're just trying to understand where you're coming from. And probably if I was to open it up to my audience, who has a question for them? Okay. Okay. So Zara is asking, mm. uh, do you have your own, you know, what ideally would be a church for a believer? Is there something for atheists? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, the, the very definition of uh, atheism is the opposite of religion. Uh, therefore, to, for, 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 for religion to have church and atheism, which is the opposite of religion, to have a church does not make sense. Uh, because uh, atheism is not just an association, it's just a rejection of an idea. That there could be someone somewhere watching us and taking care of us. Yeah, so, uh, and then church, or a mosque by definition, for me is a social gathering where people meet. Uh, the way people, Wamama will meet Kwachama because they have a common interest. So, uh, yeah, we could meet as atheists because we have common interests. So, do but you meet as atheists because you have yeah, a common I, belief yeah, or lack of belief? Naturally. Uh, by default, if I'd feel more comfortable in a table of atheism than, than people who are judging me. In the same way, you'd not be comfortable with people who are judging you in one aspect or the other. So yeah, I meet, I meet, I meet we meet with atheists. Yeah. And so in your meetings, is it just a meeting of friends or there you're able to, you know, challenge the existing belief systems, get deeply into the matter? So what happens when you, when you, you come together? Well, if you get deeper into it, then you're creating another religion. Eh? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so it's just like a hangout. Yeah, so it's just a hangout. Uh, and also, the, the main aim uh, of, of the association is to, because we believe most, there are more atheists than you can imagine in this country. But because of the stigma around it, most people are still in the closet. Mm -hmm. So to tell them that you're not alone, uh, that uh, there are other people you can share views with, uh, and uh, also, sometimes it's not just to bring uh, 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 a uh, together. There are also some some religious people who who understand the position as much as they don't agree with the atheism position. They understand the position, and therefore we also try to uh, interact with them. And in that way, we hope to empower the movement. Yeah. Okay, let's take another question. Uh, my name is Alice Mutami. Do you guys pray? <laughs> and do you indicate uh, in your CVs like I'm an atheist? Okay, allow me to respond. Okay. Uh, for the case of uh, praying, you see, prayers never work at any point. And uh, take it like a, a student is sitting for an a, a exam, he prays, and then when the results come, he fails. What, what was the essence of prayer? 
prayer, it could be if the prayer, if the student pass, pa passes exam, then it is it, it, it definitely it, it tells her that uh, prayers works. But uh, look here, uh, a student who is studying very hard without prayer will definitely pass the exam. A student who prays and doesn't study hard will definitely fail exam. So why is God not intervening with the one who is praying to respond to that matter? That definitely defines, tells us that prayers never work. Tukitafakari hayo, so remember we still have more to come here. I have Harrison Mumie, who is the president of the AP Society of Kenya, who will be coming on after the break. So don't go too far, we'll be right back.